Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you know, Kadocha is one of, if not my favorite anime series of all time. The main character of the series, Sana Karada, is a hyperactive and energetic young girl who tries to make the most of her everyday life. What if I told you that below the surface, this seemingly normal poutine girl has deep-rooted trauma and a secret sadness that she covers up using her acting and singing skills? On screen and in the book, Sana appears to have her whole life together, and gracefully deals with any problem thrown at her. Well, maybe not always gracefully, but she seems to know what to do when she runs into conflict. Sana is a very deep character, and I believe that she is one of, if not the strongest female character in all of shoujo anime. Throughout this video, I am going to discuss some of the moments in the anime as well as the manga that convey why I think she is the strongest female character in shoujo, and how she overcomes her problems in a way that no other heroine does in any other anime of the genre. Please keep in mind there will be spoilers ahead. Hope you enjoy the video! At the beginning of the series, both in the anime and manga, we are introduced to Sana Karada, an 11-year-old actress who also attends elementary school. Sana comes across as confident, outgoing, and very bright for her age. Even during episode 1, we see that Sana is still a young girl who gets herself into messy situations because she hasn't fully thought things through. However, underneath her carefree innocence, Sana hides a dismal and dark secret. Her mother, Masako, is going to publish a book called My Daughter and I, revealing the secret to the world. We find out during episode 17 of the anime that Sana was found abandoned on a park bench by Masako when she was barely a few days old. Because of Masako's inability to have a child, or rather the unlikely chance that she would be able to, she took baby Sana to the orphanage and adopted her shortly after. Her mother was very upfront with Sana when she was very young about where she came from, as Masako made it clear to her that she was not her real biological mother. She promises Sana that one day, after the two become very famous, she will write a book in order to find Sana's real mother. Young Sana had to carry this burden throughout most of her life, and it wasn't until this point that we realized that all of her cheerfulness is just a facade. After only a few days of the book being out, Misako is contacted by Sana's birth mother, Keiko Sakai. It's revealed that her mother was only 14 years old when she gave birth to Sana, and according to the manga, she had an incestuous relationship with her uncle that resulted in Sana's birth. In the anime, however, we find out that Sana's father is actor Takashi Gojo. After the initial meeting, Sana decided to meet up with Keiko and her daughter, Sana's half-sister, at an amusement park for a day. After spending the day together, Keiko asks Sana to come and live with her. Sana refuses and tells Keiko that she already has a mother who she lives with and considers family. Sana proceeds to thank Keiko for giving birth to her and allowing her to enjoy the world around her. As one of the most beautiful speeches ever given in any anime, this shows us how Sana's trauma has allowed her to mature and realize how valuable and precious life is, and that it's worth living regardless of where you come from or what you've been through. Just promise me, Keiko, we'll always remember this one thing. You brought me into this world. And... When I think about what it would mean if you hadn't... If I had never been born... Well, then I get really sad. Because it means that I wouldn't be alive right now. That I wouldn't be here at all. And that would mean... <sighs> And that would mean I'd never have known my wonderful life with Mama, or Darling Ray, or Akito, or Siyoshi. This world. I'd never have known this whole wide wonderful world. How awful. How awful. To have never been born at all. Let's rewind to the very beginning of the series, where the main focus is Sana versus the rowdy boys in her sixth grade class. As Sana grows more and more tired from the boys' antics led by none other than boss monkey Akito Hayama, she opens up about her struggle on live TV during the filming of her TV show Child's Toy. This sparks outrage from the boys the next day at school, yet Sana keeps her cool and tells the boys that what they are doing is wrong and stupid. At the end of the first episode, we get a really good idea of Sana's confidence as she decides to face the aforementioned Akito one-on-one. -on -one.
Now then, let's start with you shutting up. This scene sets the stage for what's to come in the next few episodes, with Sana challenging Akito to a bungee jumping contest, sneaking around his house to get an embarrassing photo of him, and she even tries to scare him with random vegetables at one point. Even though Sana failed over and over, she still never gave up and she still had the courage to face Akito. While most people would have given up or been too embarrassed or afraid to put a stop to his behavior, Sana persisted and eventually changed how things were going in her 6th grade class for the better, even befriending Akito, who once was her enemy. While the first arc of the series does set up the romance between the two, it also shows us how compassionate and understanding Sana can be, even with someone she dislikes. I believe it takes true strength to show kindness to not only your friends, but to your enemies as well. During the second half of the anime and manga series, Sana sets off to film a movie in the wilderness with fellow child actor Nazumi. This is also when Sana and her friends start junior high, and she meets a new character named Fuka, who is a lot like Sana and the two eventually become best friends. While Sana is away filming her movie, Fuka is going to meet up with some old friends and finds out the boy that she likes is going to be there as well. In an attempt to make the boy jealous, she asks Akito to go out with her on a date. Akito reluctantly agrees, but goes to help a friend out. Eventually, Fuka decides she wants to go out with Akito for real, and he agrees as he begins to believe that he'll never have a chance with Sana and that she is probably going to end up with Natsumi anyway. Sana is able to call Akito while she is taking a break from filming, and Akito breaks the news about him dating Fuka. After this is revealed, Sana's mood drastically changes from her usual happy-go-lucky self to cold shock. With the help of Rei's girlfriend Asako talking to her woman to woman, Sana realizes her feelings for Akito. She is absolutely hopeless and ready to quit everything. During the final scene of the movie where the director orders the crew to burn down the house with Sana inside, she has trouble exiting due to her injured leg from Natsumi's fans attacking her in a previous episode slash chapter. She's about to give up when she remembers all the people she loves, including Akito, and picks herself up and leaves the burning building at the very last second and lands a perfect take for the end of the movie. Just thinking about this scene gives me chills, and it might be my favorite sauna moment in the entire series. Even with her heart broken and unsure of how she's going to move forward with her life, Sana still picked herself up and gave her best acting performance to date, instead of wallowing in her pain and misery. In the final volume of the manga, Akito's father decides to move the Hayama family to America in order to repair Akito's broken arm. After Akito tells Sana she disassociates and has an expressionless face, difficulty eating and sleeping, and even begins to forget who Akito is for a while. When Sana's emotions get too much for her to handle, she asks Akito to elope and the two run off together. It's not until Akito breaks down and tells Sana that he will be the one who can't handle being apart from her when Sana realizes she has been neglecting Akito's needs because of her pain. Eventually, the pair are tracked down by Misako and Sana receives counseling to talk about her emotions and trauma. It is decided that Akito is still leaving so he can get surgery for his arm, and Sana finally accepts his departure and looks forward to finding herself while he is away. The reason why this is such an important moment for Sana is because it shows that she has strong empathy for the ones she loved, but struggles to tend to her own needs without neglect. One of her main internal conflicts throughout the series is how Sana is constantly trying to fix the problems and relationships of others, meanwhile she is still holding on to her own pain and pushing it down until she breaks. 
Finally, at the end of the manga, she is able to understand that holding on to her pain only hurts the people she loves, and decides that she needs to work through her own problems in order to achieve happiness for not only herself, but for those around her. It's a shame that the anime never covered the real ending of the story, as it gives each of the characters so much more depth, especially Sana. Her transformation throughout the manga is incredibly beautiful, and I feel that it's one of the most underrated developments in shoujo manga and anime. Sana's growth is very important and extremely inspirational for any girl her age reading the story, as I feel it's important that girls, and anyone really, make themselves a priority and take time to reflect on their own wants and needs. It's easy to get caught up in helping the ones you love, only to neglect yourself in the process. It's one of the most important lessons Sana learns throughout the series, through her interactions with Akito and her peers. She's the strongest female character in shoujo because she didn't conquer the world. She conquered herself. Thank you so much for watching the video today. It's a bit different from my usual content, but I had fun with it, and it's something I've wanted to talk about for a long time. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more Kadocha content in the future. See ya!